ten times a day And now the only call I ever get from you Is from the bar so there you go. I'm John Kane, and I welcome you to Let's Talk Native on this Tuesday, July 23rd. While this program may not provide a path to spiritual enlightenment, we do encourage and in some cases start conversations. We don't do prayers or buffalo speeches. We take a tough look at our history, oppression, and survival. We talk about culture, the arts, politics, and identity. And we may step on a few toes along the way. But our real goal here is to bring people together by breaking down what separates us. We will take on the false narratives and provide critical thinking to all that is heaped upon us. And we do it all right here from the Cattaraugus territory of the Seneca Nation. So let's talk native. But first, let me uh, remind people that our audio streams at www.letstalknative.com. And we stream live video of the show on our Facebook live group pages. And, uh, and those are shared through many other pages as well. Um, afterwards, we take the audio and we post it up on SoundCloud. And that puts it on uh, all of your favorite podcast platforms. So you can uh, find us by ser- simply looking for Let's Talk Native Podcast. And you uh, should subscribe. And then you'll be able to uh, pick up those podcasts uh, anytime. Um, we take the video and we post it up on our YouTube channel, which is Let's Talk Native TV. And again, I encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you'll get notifications, not just for when we post uh, videos of our shows, but when we do our short form videos. And uh, we're due to do another one of those. I keep uh, kicking the can, but we'll, we'll get another one of those cranked out here uh, shortly. Um, I'm the host of Let's Talk Native, and I'm assisted by Jake Proud in studio, who is managing our video and our sound. And of course, I am joined in studio with uh, by my good friend, uh, Ed Schindler. And I got to tell you, um, this um, uh, this will be the last show that Ed will be joining us with us for a while. He'll, uh, he'll, he's uh, taking a trip and we'll uh, we'll catch him when he when he returns, uh, whenever that may be. So um so i wanted to mention that i also want to mention again we are on tuesday uh which is our regular scheduled evening and uh, although we did a sunday night show last uh over the weekend we are returned back to our regular schedule so we'll be back uh on our saturday uh tuesday schedule so uh be, make a note so you, uh, so you don't miss us um and I guess I look. I gotta say, we're we're dedicating this show to to my good buddy Matt Hill, who has been so much uh, in, such an integral part of this show for so many years, um, and still still says he's very busy on Facebook, and you know he he helps uh, you know give us some some program ideas, and he he did a post, um, I think it was just today about Scano or Scano as we say in Mohawk, um, about how do you find it. You know, uh, and how do you maintain it, and what do you do to 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 reach it? And uh, so, if you don't know, I mean, the the, the short translation for for Skana or Skano is is peace, but it's but, but like so many of of our words that we, that we use, um, our words are not necessarily noun based. They're they're descriptive or they're they're action oriented. So they're more of a they're either a you know an adjective, adverb, or verb based uh, uh, set of words. So when we say skana, it, we aren't just saying peace as a thing or, or as a a state. It's about when when we speak of, of skana or skano, what we're talking about is is achieving it or working towards um, maintaining balance or harmony. So I, I want to talk about that because and part part of the reason I want to do this is because some of the immediate responses to, to Matt's post, um, I think send, send the wrong signal. So I want to do, I want to talk about some things in the culture and Ed, this is where you can help me a great deal here. <clears throat> I want to talk about why in the culture, this notion that we can maintain peace all by ourselves or that we can, you know, in fact, and, and, and look, I'm not going to name any names, but, but one, of the, one of the comments immediately, immediately was about how you maintain peace is to mind your own business and, and, mm. and to not involve yourself in, in, in other people's drama or, or whatever. And while there's something to that, and we can, we can talk about where the lines are on that, but in our culture... There's no place, and, and in fact, there's there's parts of ceremonies, there's there's expressions, there's there's so there there are so many things in our culture, our history, that suggest that minding our own business 
is inconsistent with uh, I mean yeah. ceremonies. I mean, so I uh, so first let me let me just give you the toss on this one. I mean, this is you're you're gonna be leaving us here for for an indefinite period of time. So uh, I want to utilize this show and uh, and 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 some of your background to to address what it is about the about trying to maintain um, Skana. Uh, the, and, and maintaining balance and harmony that requires participation. It requires community. And frankly, it requires that we, in some cases, get in each other's business because <laughs> there is no such thing as, um, uh, as you know, no person is an island, as they say. And you know, so when when you suggest that you don't want to involve yourself in in the drama of of, of say your next door neighbor, that we may not have options there. And so anyway, let me, let me give you the toss on this and let you hit this with the, some of the things that you, that you've experienced or some of the things you're aware of. There, there are some things which have to be um, presented in order for people to understand clearly. And um, one of the first ones that came to my mind when, when it was brought up was, was what we call stirring the ashes. And, and that is in essence based on bringing the people together and then bringing out those who haven't spoken or who haven't provided their share of participation. And that's in order to allow the community to work together as a whole. And it, it's in essence saying that we don't work as individuals. We don't stay out of other people's business, so to speak, because everyone's business is, is the community's business. So therefore, you want to be aware of what it is if we need to address anything and now and of course there, there are limits to that i mean oh um, yeah i mean there's some things that, that are, are private matters and that kind of stuff but but when we talk about a disturbance for instance when we when we talk about something that has disrupted the balance disrupted the harmony of a, of a community or a family now we're talking about something that isn't just i mean whether we're talking about a, a you know uh, child abuse or you know domestic violence of any kind or or substance abuse i mean i'm not talking about what somebody does in a bedroom or, or whatever else but i mean um uh, unless it's violence <laughs> or, or abuse but um the, the, uh, you know I, so i get when some people say something about minding their own business but i want i think it's important that we expand a little bit about what what affects all of us mm-hmm one, one of the big things to consider is that within our culture, there weren't police officers. They didn't go around patrolling, upholding man-made laws. Or CPS. Or any, any, other, <laughs> any of those others. They didn't exist. What happened was that those responsibilities, if there were anything to be concerned about for the community, was the responsibility of the people. Okay? And the people were were provided an opportunity to understand what what was our concern what was the concern of the community and that stirring of the ashes was to bring out people's uh, participation in what they thought what their considerations were for r- resolution if necessary and those are the types of things which were just were just part of the community it wasn't something that was so called in other people's business if it was concern for the community okay well i mean and if you take this even to um to like ceremony yes uh talk about a little bit about the marriage ceremony the marriage ceremony is when the um marriage is arranged and uh, the two people well even if it's not arranged because we, we you know because even even well, yeah, when two the, people come together the arrangement know, may be just carrying out yeah, the ceremony yeah, yeah. But, but what happens is that one of the elders stands up and they see the two people beside each other and he starts speaking of what it was that was taught in order to help us understand what we're doing here. And he would explain not only to the couple but to the people who were at the marriage. The community. What, what it is that we're responsible to take care of as a community and as a people. And all of these things, they, they speak for quite a while explaining what it is that our responsibilities are based upon the traditions and teachings of our people. 
and it came to be understood that the responsibility wasn't just the responsibility of the people getting married. It was the responsibility of the community, okay? And their getting together wasn't just their responsibility. It was also the responsibility of the community to help them to work things out if necessary or to continue on. In well, and it, but, it, but even more than that, I mean, because at some level, it's, yes. to, it's that we all take an interest in this, in this young couple. Yeah. And we take an interest and we, we try to observe it if we see that they're having trouble, that we, that we help. So, yes. you know, it isn't just about um, not causing trouble within a young, a young family, but, but being responsible enough to say, um, look, we see you're struggling with this. And, and, and look, and this could be anything. It could be, you know, not just relationship issues. It could be, you know, home. It could be um, food. It could be, you know, um, with, you know as, as they begin to, to raise children. Yes. So what we do is we, we look... As a community, we, we take a, a responsibility in that young couple. So, and so obviously, if we took a responsibility in that young couple, we've taken a responsibility in all the couples. Yes. So we don't separate. And, I, and again, I know people can get you know, creeped out about this whole privacy issue, and, and, and that's not really what I'm talking about. I'm talking about trying to be aware as a community about that balance yeah. um, you know, getting off and, and that, that lack of harmony. So... Yeah, you know, so and I and I think that's the important part. I mean, uh, about the marriage ceremony is discussing the re the responsibility that we have as a community, not just to make sure that we don't cause a problem in a family, but that we look to help. Uh, you know, uh, you know, a, any family that's struggling, and you know, and, and I think you know that's not the world that we live in today we're 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 constantly bombarded with this idea that um uh you know oh no that's not my kid oh no that's not my uh, problem that's you know. and so you know and i go back to you know a conversation once that took place in, in one of your classes when we yeah. talked about um substance abuse for instance and the amount of alcohol that uh, consumption even that was associated with with and I'm not, I'm, I'm not condemning the idea of having social gatherings and things, but there, there had become a pattern of partying that was taking place not only after the sings, but even sometimes while they were going on. And, yeah. and one of the comments that was offered up was, wow, we can't tell people what to do. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, we can. I mean, uh, as a longhouse community in particular, you know, we shouldn't be reducing the longhouse just to this open door cathedral, you know, the, a church. We should understand that. Look, with, with this longhouse, we're, we're talking about this longhouse being emblematic of our community, and so we have a responsibility. And look, if somebody doesn't want to conduct themselves properly, just like in our homes, we can say you're not welcome in, in this. If you are going to bring, you know, um, you know, alcohol uh, into our you know, our, our ceremonies, essentially, into our, into our socials, then you're not welcome to be a part of, the, of this longhouse. And, and look, I know nobody likes the idea of excluding people, but we do have a, a, a responsibility to, to maintain a certain standard of behavior as it relates to, uh, to you know, frankly, our communities, not just to our longhouses. Yeah, and one of the things that... <laughs> one of the things that I think is really essential is to understand why things are happening and people have to understand that from within themselves also and because of that we we were talking about peace is a, is a regaining of balance what is the balance of and basically if you take a look at it it's the emotions and what are emotions emotions are nothing more than your evaluation of a situation whatever it may be, okay, is what basically triggers emotional responses. And the imbalance means that you're not able to function in a, in a cognizant manner. You're functioning in an emotional manner, which doesn't allow you to think clearly. Well, and, and one of the first, you know, uh, emotions are tied to, to, you know, survival, you know, the whole yes. fight or flight kind of uh, um, uh, instinct, I guess, and so one of the one of the emotions that is the most 
you know, I mean, uh, that affects you the most is fear. But that fear can be tied to everything from grief to, in, you know, just basic insecurity, not just whether you're, you have a fear of dying. And so when we talk about emotions taking control, look, in, in your immediate response to a situation, which, you know, again, triggers that fight or flight response, at some point you, you assess the situation and then you, you're supposed to calm that out, right? You're, you maintain balance. The problem is when, when you're talking about emotions is some people get hung up on them. Yes. And, and so this idea of, you know, of the full range of emotions and, and even when you talk about things like hate, you know, or, you know, or any kind of confrontational uh, behavior that oftentimes is still tied back to that, to that initial fear that, you know, that, that fight or flight instinct. So, so part of the whole thing is, is to, as a community, to help people maintain balance when they be, have be, when their emotions have kind of gotten the best of them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, joy can be uh, one of the things that literally stimulate fear because, you know, what, what's going to happen when this goes away? And that's one of the problems with um, grief, losing a loved one to, um, to passing on, losing, losing him to death. And you start wondering, okay, what's going to happen? What's going to happen next? And people start having to deal with those types of thinking. And, and it's that regaining of the balance. Okay? And it's not something which is going to be individual. It's something which is going to have to be generally taken care of as a group. Okay? One of the ones we were talking about was Haiwanta. And he lost his daughters. Well, uh, b- before you even get there, because and, and I wanted to go there, but I, because you mentioned okay. something else about joy, and I wanted to bring up something. And this is one of the things that that uh, you know Ross used to yeah. uh, mention all the time is that is to be clear that there's a difference between being happy and feeling good. Yes. So this is again, but these are tied to emotions, and people can confuse the two. So, which is part of the reason we get involved in in some of the substance abuse issues because there is a sense of euphoria. Yeah. that we can get from some of these substance abuse, especially if we're mired in our own conflict. We can get those moments of, of, uh, of euphoria. And so then we start to mix up the difference between being happy and feeling good. So mm-hmm. and, uh, again, so, you know, to your point about, uh, <laughs> yes. about emotions and, and how sometimes the community, we have to sometimes help people understand the difference between pursuing happiness and your pursuit of uh, of of your you know um, instant gratification about about feeling good. So I mean, so it, it comes right back to that. Yes. But I mean, and again, mm-hmm. I don't, uh, getting back to uh, you know this, I think Hayawenta is is a perfect example of of a person who got mired in this idea of grief and and trying to um, deal with his emotions all by himself. I mean, the story of how one thing, and yeah. by all means, go ahead, because this is a perfect example of somebody who has to transform their way of thinking. Yeah. He was, uh, literally sitting there, uh, near a lake ready to, you know, see how long it took to, to pass away because he wouldn't eat. He would, wouldn't stop walking until he got to that. And it turns out while he was sitting there, this one came along and handed him a row of wampum, strung, string of wampum beads, okay? And what, it takes a long story, so I'm going to sh- just shorten it. And it was the, the peacemaker gave him these wampum um, strings. And he gave them for different purposes. One was to, to uh, clear the lump out of his throat so he could speak. One was to be able to hear. One was to be able to see. One was to be able to have his heart settle down, to relax, okay? But it was all basically from that point on where he was, where the peacemaker simply asked him, what is it, what is it that is um, occurring with you? What, share with me what you need, need to share. And that's basically where, where he was able to lay out precisely what he was feeling the grief of well and 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 i know there's many versions of uh, of the interaction the initial interaction but one of the versions of uh of the story of hayawenta and the gondolita was uh the gondolita first observing 
yeah. observing yes. uh, um, Hiawanta. And, and in, in one of the, 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 the stories as it goes, is he noticed that, that one of the things that Hiawanta was doing, he was gathering some, some of the wampum, uh, his, his shells yeah. himself. And what he was saying, and, and what the, as the story goes, what the Ganawida hears him repeating is, if I ever meet anybody who is suffering with the same grief, I'm going to um, recall right. how I'm getting through this so I can help the next person. Mm-hmm. Now, he's saying this even as he's struggling with it. Yeah. So, so even as he's in, mired in his own grief, he's trying to have a mind um, that's forward thinking enough to say, if I ever meet anybody who is suffering as I am suffering now, I will, yes. try, I, I will try to help them. So when the Gondawida offers um, him the, these, these wampum, now right. he's, he's trying to help him overcome the grief by, and, by, doing, these, by doing these things. And he's giving him audience to share with him. Yeah. Okay. And that was that was why he needed to clear his throat, clear the lump out of his throat, so he could speak, okay, clearly, so he could hear, so that he could see, so that the his heart could slow down, he could relax. All of those things were basically what he was not able to do at that time. Well, and and and, and this is a part of uh, what are what's considered a traditional uh, uh, funeral now. Yes, and. and what we see is that it takes a community to offer to wipe away the, I mean, when we talk, you know, again, the metaphor for death is, 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 the, is. the woman of death, you know, striking the fire and, and kicking up the embers and those, and mm-hmm. the ashes, and the embers get in our eyes and our ears and in our throat. So we create, we create a metaphor for the pain of, uh, of grief. And so as a community, we, we offer to wipe wipe those uh, those tears. ashes out of the eyes, the tears out of the eyes. We offer we we offer uh, you know the purest. Um, we, we use that with the softest doe skin, right, to wipe the eyes. We offer the the purest water to, to clear the throat, clear. and we and we use the feather of a seagull's wing to to clean to clean the ears. So, so the, all this ties back to this idea of of community helping somebody overcome grief. Which is, and of course, yes. this is also tied to to the condolence and the small condolence. Yeah. <laughs> and it's tied to on the people understanding more clearly what they were being shared with by the by the peacemaker, the Ganawida. Uh, when he goes and shares with them what he learned from the peacemaker, and they they in turn are able to understand more clearly per per person what it is that they could use help with. Mm-hmm. And therefore, they reach out to help one another to do this. And we're not talking just, just the men. We're talking the people, everyone. Didn't matter whether it was man, woman, or young person, elder, doesn't matter. All the people were basically there to help one another to come through that. Well, and, and, and of course, if you... The obvious conclusion of the the peacemaker and and Hiawenta is the work in re, reuniting the, uh, the the five the five nations you know at the time and 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 again none of this is minding your own business. <laughs> no. All of this is about trying to you know do the work required to um, uh, to help people. Uh, you know, you know, regain balance and, and harmony. So, I mean, the, the obviously the, the work that the Hayawenta did with with the Gondawida was, you know, among the most powerful um, uh, outreaches in the community and plugging themselves into that work. I mean, and and that's that's what we know as as the as that story. So, you know, again, I, you know, to 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 walk this thing back to this whole notion that we. Um, that we have to participate in uh, in in helping to solve conflict that that not just affects you know a child or a, or a couple or a family or a community but even at the confederacy level so i mean yeah but anyway i i i, I think that's i think the, the story of of um Hayawenta, just like the story of of Taladaho and the story yeah. of redemption there's a certain story of redemption that that takes Hayawenta from being isolated and yes. and you know brooding and uh, and mired in his own depression and his own grief and and again the the, the first outreach coming from the Gonawida to, to yeah. help 
help him cure that and then give purpose and saying, look, your grief, even your grief, as you're, as you're suffering from it and as you were already starting to string those, those wampum together, those shells together, so you can help the next person. Well, let's start helping. I mean, it's a great story. And it's also one of the, what I've tried to share. I, I was teaching a course, and um, one of the things I was presenting was what, we, what I referred to as overlooked skills. And you take a look at them, and I, I can list them in listening, comprehension, empathy, patience, compassion, camaraderie, sense of belonging, uh, communication, and participation. All of those start with, within the self. You don't start by listening to other people. You start by listening to yourself. Pay attention to what you are communicating to yourself. Okay? And it goes through all of them, whether it's comprehension, empathy, patience, all of those things you have to start within yourself and then practice going outward to others and extend that. And it become, what, one of the things to be aware of is it was common skill back then. Compared to today, a lot of people say people don't listen today, they prepare for re rebuttal. Well, and, and, and the thing is, we defer those problems like there's, like there's the professionals. You know, yes. the, there's the police, there's the CPS, there's, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's you know, mental health professionals. We don't understand that we have within our community our own skill sets for, for providing counsel. And every yes. one of those overlooked skills are, is about, um, about being able to, to seek out and provide counsel. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and although it was more commonplace, even within our communities, we knew that there were people who, who had a special skill set for that. And so when we would oftentimes look to those people to help initiate uh, bringing the community together around, around a common problem. Mm -hmm. And one of the, one of the things that um, would be taking place is there would be elders who would be able to share with, uh, with anyone else what they had experienced, okay? But there were people who were able to communicate a lot, say, better than, say, me or you or whomever else. But that would be the one that they would share a lot of things with. Well, they, because and they did it with story. They did it with story. Yeah. And the story helped people understand what the purpose was of both the community as well as the people within the community. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's really important for people to realize that if we're going to keep a community, we have to do it together. Mm -hmm. And that is so important. We're, we're at the bottom of the hour. We'll, we'll take a break here when we come back. But uh, I, I wanna, when we come back, this kind of brings us back to the, to the concept of stirring the ashes. Stirring and so the ashes. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go there uh, and a few other places uh, when, when we come back. This is John Kane with Ed Schindler, and this is Let's Talk Native. Talk to somebody let them know Talk to your friends Let your feelings show Even if it feels like there's nobody Don't let go Sometimes it feels like The walls are closing in Sometimes it feels like you never fit in. You know, lots of people love you. Don't let go. Even if you think no one cares about you, 
Please remember there's something you can do Not by yourself I know that much is true Reach out your hand There'll be someone there for you Just reach out You try to be brave Pretend there's nothing wrong But you need a little help, child To make you feel strong You know, lots of people love you So don't let go Lots of people love you Don't let go Lots of people love you Don't let go Don't let go All right, thanks for coming back. This is John Kane, and this is uh, with Ed Schindler, and this is uh, this is Let's Talk Native. Hey, look, I want to thank my sponsors. Um, before we, we get back into it, I want to thank uh, Ross and Holly John and the RJE family of businesses. I want to th- uh, thank uh, ERW, Eric White and ERW, and uh, and a few other sponsors who who help out from time to time. One in particular who kind of remains uh, remains uh, anonymous, I guess, that supports uh, supports the program. Uh, it is through the support, especially those who who do it every week or every month that allow us to do you know some additions to our uh to what we're doing here to uh, add certain features and maintain some of the equipment that we have here so uh without you we couldn't do it so i uh so i, I very much uh, appreciate that and i also appreciate those of you who who help out from that time to time those of you who share the show those of you who comment on uh as we stream live and uh, those of you who comment on the post so um that's the kind of participation and and of course on on this on this day i also want to again acknowledge my um my appreciation for for ed schindler joining us here in uh in studio and uh and and and, and again addressing some of these very issues so let me let me get right back to it before we broke um as you were speaking it 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 we it almost brings us right back when we talk about community because it within uh, you know one of the major par- or a significant part of you know the, the our thanksgiving ceremonies um, or festivals is this is the act of stirring the ashes, but yeah. again the act of stirring the ashes, and and I've heard people characterize it in different ways, but my the way it was taught to me is that the act of stirring the ashes and, and the concept of stirring the ashes it's a metaphor for for taking those embers that may have grown cold or at least dark within within our fire and and our fire is again the symbol of family. And it's a symbol of our of assembling, you know, of, of coming together. So the the idea is that when you stir the ashes, those embers that have grown cold or, or dark get get new life. Put, they they brighten up. They they start to glow. So the the idea is to both not only provide and and, and observe and make sure that we we draw that light and that participation from the silent ones, from the the quiet ones. And we do that for two reasons. One is because you know people can oftentimes feel like their voice isn't heard. But there's also there's another side. And the other side is that there are those who intentionally remain silent when they have an opportunity to speak. And then later will say, well, I heard them talk about this and I heard them talk about that and I didn't agree with anything, but, but I never spoke up. So hmm. the, the stirring of the ashes is both um, to encourage participation and to, uh, you know, and almost, I mean, to, to, to talk about participation being not just an opportunity, but, an, but, a, but a duty. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, and again, when we talk about how do we maintain balance, harmony, skana, skano, how, how, how do we do that? Well, we do it collectively. 
because it is hard for an individual. I mean, it's hard for an individual to lock themselves away and, and be at peace all by themselves. I, look, I know there's meditation. There's a lot of stuff that you can do that can, you know, do as you, you talk about. Listen to yourself first. Mm-hmm. But it, that's only listen to yourself first. first. It isn't listen to yourself only. It yes. isn't about maintaining yourself without any concern about anybody else. And so there's so much, of, there's so much in our culture so the stirring of the ashes, the story of, of, of uh, Hayawenta, um, mm-hmm. the, the concept of seven generations. I mean, we can't mind our own business and, and then ha- and have any sense for responsibility to the seven generations uh, you know, that are, are to come, especially those ones we'll never see. I mean, how do you, it, you can't have this, this, you know, this sole sense of self and be selfless at the same time. I mean, it's, it, those are, it's, they're, they're opposites. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the idea and, of, of having a responsibility to the seven generations, meaning all seven, but, but the hardest uh, thing to accept responsibility for are the ones you'll never see. So when we talk about seven generations, the reason we talk about seven generations is because we will likely never see the seventh generation to follow us. So when we say we have a responsibility to them, that means we have to have a, a responsibility to not only each other as family members or as community, but again, to the environment. So this idea of skana or skano is why we are inherently environmentalists. Yeah. And that environmentalism goes beyond just do no harm. But it, it, it's about making sure the things that we do and that we observe, that we, we, we try to participate in that cycle and, and maintain that the, the cycle of life does not get disrupted. You know, we, we see you know, man has an arrogance about them, damming rivers, you know, <clears throat> removing mountaintops for, for, for mining, other extractive, uh, extractive industries. These are the kinds of things that... If you have a sense uh, of a commitment to Skana and the seven generations, then you, we, ha- we have to step up and we have to be concerned. Building a 30-meter telescope on, on, the, on the top of, a, of a, a mountain that has, you know, is, a, is essentially a gift, not just to man, but to creation. I mean, when, I, when you think about what, what Mauna Kea is, and the fact that it's already, you know, again, they've already built a bunch of telescopes on it. They've already left a human footprint on a place that, that creation provided singular beauty to all by itself. And now they want to build a massive telescope on there. So the reason that we oppose these things isn't because we're opposed to looking at the, at the stars. I mean, that, that, that mountain is perfectly suited for, for, for gazing into, uh, you know, into the sky world. Absolutely. But... The idea of, uh, of abusing that, uh, that unique perspective because, you know, somebody thinks that we, we're not looking at enough, I guess. I mean, so the, the whole idea that we are uh, that, about our roles in, uh, in protecting the environment. And part of what we're, the main thing we're protecting it from is ourselves. Yes. Man is, is, is the, the culprit in disrupting that balance and that harmony. <clears throat> so when we say that we have a responsibility. I mean, look, we don't have to break a beaver dam, you know, because that's, that, that's not going to d- destroy the environment. But when you think about, look, I was just listening to a whole story on, on NPR today about um, how, how many of the salmon runs are, are uh, in danger, not just because of climate change, but because of development, you know, and, and, how, and how people, of, you know, have have such an adverse effect to migra- migratory patterns uh, to, you know, again, not, not just climate, but I mean, I think about in, in Colorado, um, uh, the, the, the uh, mountain lion attacks and that kind of stuff. I mean, the, the interaction between, you know, uh, other parts of creation and man, we, the man's first reaction is to look at the uh, other parts of creation as a nuisance, not to recognize the fact that they are the ones who are the nuisance to the, to that ba- balance of uh, of not just power but uh, of, of harmony and, and creation. So, yeah. 
And um, one of the things that is to be looked at is the the story of Tikanawita, the the peacemaker, was to help the people put down their weapons at least uh, in their minds, and to get along with each other because the that reasons was, for conflict. Yes, there were reasons for them, and that to talk about them and discuss them helped to bring about that possibility of resolution for them not leave it for the next generation or for whatever or not to leave it to so-called specialists no the people took care of it and it's really important to understand that when we talk about the um the balance of the emotions is is peace okay and just to share with you i learned that from a man named gene tin elk and he was teaching I went to a uh, substance abuse program, and he was teaching there, and he was teaching that drinking was not a problem. And I was wondering what, and he said right then, drinking is a symptom of a problem. And that's where he explained that the emotions, they were basically not able to function in a cognizant manner. They function emotionally, so they didn't get to really have um, objective thinking and that's what caused the drinking it was the was the inability to regain balance that was the problem it wasn't the drinking the drinking was simply a symptom and it, it, it's you know they oftentimes will say it's a coping mechanism and and it's a it, it's a and not a very successful coping mechanism. No. <laughs> and that's what a lot of these these adverse behaviors are it's an attempt for somebody to hide the fact that they have an underlying problem and yes. you know, and that's so that's and look that that could be everything from lashing out and violence uh, uh, domestic violence uh, uh gambling i mean there there are so many things that people do that are a bad behavior and you and you wonder well, why would they do that well it's mm -hmm. because there's a certain amount of uh of release from yes. the tensions that comes with this stuff good or bad in seneca language it's called the gotnagondinios and it means it takes your mind away. And it doesn't matter whether you're talking alcohol or substance abuse or gambling or money or... Temper. Power, temper. All these types of things that literally don't have you thinking objectively. It has you thinking in a manner which is based upon whatever emotion you're allowing to function under. And I think that's what we're talking about in terms of learning to regain your balance in order to find that peace okay because if you're going to be functioning emotionally you're not doing much objective thinking and that's where other people can help that that's where we're talking about Hayawanta was helped by the by the Tiganawita to think about what he was what he wanted to share with the people because that's what he wanted to do okay and then how to present that to them in a manner which they would be able to accept it, and and all I'm doing, all of that's doing is simply helping the community function as a community. Well, and the reason for for you know obviously tying this to you know even to Hayawenta and the Wido or to um, stirring the ashes or to seven generations, you know the 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 case we're trying to make here is that to maintain and to and to um, restore. Uh, balance and and peace, if you will, is uh, involved. It, it it requires involvement. It, it it requires people to participate. And 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 I think the point, the thing that also has to be brought up is that you don't get to that place, and then you know, peace isn't your know, skanda isn't the absence of conflict. It's the process of of restoring balance and harmony because in nature. There's tensions all the time. That's why wind blows, unequal heating of the earth. I mean, it's uh, uh, you know trees and blades of grass, you know, fighting for you know battling each other, competing with each other for sunlight. There's you know there's obviously uh, the food chain. You know, there's uh, there's there's so much there there's tensions in nature, but but there's balance in it. And and uh, well, in, in a perfect world, there's balance. You know, trying to to deal with those things that that alter that balance, that's the whole idea of skana or skano is the, is the idea of trying to restore that balance. Now, 
it, it, and again, when we say trying to maintain that balance, we understand that the balance gets thrown off. And that's look, we have you know, we have seasons that change. <laughs> we we have so much of nature is dynamic and fluid. So our lives are dynamic and fluid. I mean, there's pain associated with childbirth. There's, yeah. there's pain associated with with the loss of loved ones. So mm -hmm. we there's pain coming into the world and there's pain leaving the world. No, that pain is a, is a part of our lives. And, and, we, and we regain balance from that pain. A mother, if a, if a mother never regained her balance or, or, rega or recovered from the pain of childbirth, she'd never have another child again. <laughs> I mean, it's one of, those, one of those longest, almost a long running joke. Why would I do that again? You know, but, <laughs> and, and so this is, I mean, this is what our lives, all men, all men, kind you know womankind you know uh, we we all have this this ongoing and i don't want to say it's struggle but it's it's the it, what, what life is is about this this constant work if you will or and it doesn't have to be you know laborious i mean it doesn't have to be a dreaded task but the idea of trying to maintain that balance and maintain that harmony see when we talk about again happiness and the pursuit of happiness, this is where th this comes in. Because we don't have to view um, our participation in this constant you know, battle or struggle in nature, uh, tensions of nature, as a bad thing. So, I mean, there, there, there's, there's beauty in a thunderstorm. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm not just talking about the rainbow. I mean, <laughs> there, there, there's, there's beauty in darkness. And there's and there's beauty and light, so yes. I mean this is the whole idea is how do we make sure that we capture our place in in again a very fluid world that we live in in terms of the, you know the, the the tensions and the and the struggles of nature, because out of those struggles is that pursuit of happiness. There's there's something people should realize that that exist within the Haudenosaunee that that a lot of places have lost okay there's a land base and the land base is for future generations okay there's where we're talking about the seventh generation we have a common history a common culture common languages we have communities okay how many people have been to another um, part of the Haudenosaunee, and they, they ask, what clan are you? Okay? Because it's family. That's what clans are. They identify. We identify each other in that manner. And then there's the identity that we are part of this. It doesn't matter whether we're at our home or whether we're visiting somewhere else. We're still part of that. And well, and, and, and I'm glad you brought up the, uh, the clans in general. Yes. But when we talk about that circle wampum, yes. that circle wampum is, is another example of, look, we're together. I mean, the idea that those 49 families and that one title that binds us all together and, and incorporates, you know, a responsibility to, to creation. I mean, so we look at those, those, those 50 wampums and... They're they're together. They're bound together, and and you know we, we we bring them all inside that circle, right? And that circle is not about in inclusion and exclusion, but it, but it, it shows a, it demonstrates visually how we work together to maintain because that that circle essentially is like a circle of life, but it's also it, it's it's it it gives you this I idea of 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 inclusiveness. It, it's a, it's about binding us together, so. Again, without trying to attack this idea of mind your own business uh, as a, as a singular you know problem, um, the idea of minding your own business is inconsistent with it, with our culture on every level, from circle wampum to seven generations to the Gonawida and Hayawenta to stirring the ashes, and and in fact, you know the the you know look the, uh, a funeral ceremony and a wedding ceremony, yes, a naming ceremony. Uh -huh. We do all this stuff with each other. 
and and I think this is you know, this is why um, I think it's really important that people understand that to maintain skana, to 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 understand that that skana is a process and skano is a process, and it's a, and and we look and I hate to say though I using the word work at it or or that it's a constant battle it isn't those things, but it's a process, and that process provides you know, uh, you know, uh, joy and happiness as well. Mm -hmm. But again, we can't get to a place where we say, okay, now there's no more conflict. You know, I mean, that's look, that's what they, they teach in, um, uh, in church, right? That yes. heaven is a place where there's no conflict anymore. So that you live your whole life in a, in a state, a state of conflict only to have, you know, an everlasting life without, con you know, look, and whether you, whether that's your belief system or not, I think the important part is to understand that our life with our family, you know, and what we've, what we've drawn from, from all those people who came before us and what we try to you know, keep intact for the, all those, those that will come after us is, is a process that will allow us to, to constantly, you know, move uh, and, and, and adjust to maintain a level of harmony and a level of balance. Because, like I said, maybe it isn't achievable. Maybe we never get to that place where we say, okay, now we've done it and now we're done. Because it isn't. You know, the moment we, the moment we restore a certain level of harmony or balance, there's something that's going to change it a little bit. So we, we, again, we make, we make more. And you know what? We're not the only ones in creation who do this. Mm -hmm. Animals do it on a daily basis. Yeah. Like I said, blades of grass competing for, for sunlight. You know, trees, I mean, plants, I mean, uh, you know, all, all forms of life are forever in this, in this constant motion of, of, of establishing, reestablishing, working towards balance and harmony. There's um, a phrase that I like to use, and it's um, the power of choice. And it, it says that throughout life, pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional. Okay. Well, that go, you can take that right back to childbirth and uh, right. and, 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 and uh, grief, right? Yeah, because you don't. Suffering means you're going to just remember your pains. Okay, so you have a power of choice to let it go, because it doesn't last. I know now it doesn't last that long. If you if you overcome the pain, then let go of the suffering. Yeah, and, I mean, you you can live in fear. Of, of pain and that's that's the definition of suffering right mm -hmm. fear of, you being, wanna... not just having the pain but but living with the fear of that pain is almost the definition of suffering so yes. you're right pain is unavoidable but suffering is optional that's, yeah that's a good one I, I, I like that one i like that one and you know and, and i think that's the lesson that we all need to to take um from you know even from this discussion and and other discussions is that um <laughs> We, if we work together, we we can help and we can solve, you know, this notion of suffering. I mean, again, we we, we can't, we don't. Pain is a temporary um, circumstance. I mean, even if it's if it's the last pain you have, it's yes. it, you know, it can be relieved by death. But it, but the fact that we can maintain that um, that uh, and and continue to inflict that pain on ourselves over and over and over again by, by the state of suffering or it, uh, inflict it on others. Yes. So we can take the pain that we, that we, that we experience and then f feel some sort of need to inflict pain on others as, uh, because we were hurt. And, and of course, that, that has to do with vengeance, right? But it also has to do with jealousy, has to do with all these other you know, um, emotions um, uh, that, that people, you know, um, I guess sink themselves to. So I, I think this is um, this is why when we ask when people ask the question, how do you maintain it? You probably don't do it by yourself, and you don't do it every single moment because <laughs> it's uh, you, you. What's what's called being at peace is not going to be lasting. It's not something you do for a New Year's resolution. I was told that that will maybe be a power of choice, and you can choose to be peace but it's going to last no longer than a heartbeat and then you're going to have to choose again because you're always going to be within that structure 
of having to regain balance. Well, I mean, the, 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 re- power, the power of sleep, for instance. Yeah. I mean, the, the restorative thing. nature of sleep. I mean, look, while you're sleeping, you know, the tensions all continue, right? I mean, yes. the tensions of nature, the, you know, and, uh, you know, the, um, yeah, all, all that, that constant, you know, you know, conflict of nature. And I don't mean conflict in the worst sense of the word, but, you know, it is so important to that people, you know, and people who struggle with sleep. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes, uh, are the are the ones who are, are battling health issues on so many different levels, or, yes. or behavioral issues. Yeah, I mean, um, depression is tied to sleep deprivation. Yeah, sleep deprivation has been militarized as a as a weapon, a torture tool. Yeah. I mean, so you think about about all that stuff. So, no, I, I you're, you're right though. I mean, you our 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 task in life is not to toil over um, the tensions of nature on a, you know, continuously. We, we rest. Yeah. We rest and, we, and we, we, we hand off to others and we, yeah. we look to the people who, are, who, can, who can provide the, you know, the, the greatest assistance uh, uh, you know, on, a, uh, on a given conflict or a given uh, circumstance. And just think of that uh, picture of the lion and the antelope taking a drink from the river at the same place. They they're, aren't enemies. They're not enemies. They're, no, no. I mean, it's, it's a completely different. And they're not know. in a situation where they have to be com, com, uh, afraid of one another. Yeah, or, not always. Not always, right? So there you go. And but, there's that, there's that um, balance. They were both getting a drink of water. Well, and I want to thank you um, for you know joining me in, the, in these these many weeks that you've been here, and uh, I look forward to uh, to you you coming back. and And like you said, we are getting ourselves a little bit better situated. So even as you uh, as you travel, uh, mm-hmm. perhaps we can get you to join mm-hmm. us by phone from time to time and uh, participate. Maybe we'll even get you. Uh, uh, we'll, we're, we're, our hope is that as we improve some of our connectivity issues here that mm-hmm. we can have some Skype calls and that kind of stuff. So even if you join me by phone, maybe we'll get your face on the screen or something as, yeah. as we go. So, okay. so again, I want to thank you for, for participating so much. And I want to thank you, the listeners for, for joining us. Um, we do this twice a week uh, on, on Tuesdays and Saturdays. And I travel to New York on Thursdays, although I will not be traveling to New York this Thursday. So I may, I may do a, uh, do a let's talk with John Kane show from our, from our studios here. So I may do that Thursday, but I'll, um, I'll, I'll post something on, on Facebook and, and other places as well, so you'll, you'll know. Uh, so WBI is entering into their fund drive. So I do encourage people to go to uh, WBI.org and uh, follow the tabs and make a donation. And if you do so, make sure you do it in the name of my show, which is Let's Talk with John Kane. Um, so anyway, we'll, uh, we'll see you back here uh, on, on, on Saturday and, uh, like I said, maybe on Thursday as well. We'll see. Anyway. Anyway, something going wrong.